Flexbox, Grid. We have two amazing layout tools available to us when we're writing our CSS these days. But wait, why do we have two layout tools? Well, the thing is, we all know when we should be putting on a pair of running shoes or dress shoes, and it's a little bit similar when we're thinking of Flexbox versus Grid. They are both things that create layouts, just like shoes are both things that we put on our feet, but they both serve different purposes and they have different strengths and weaknesses. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the differences between them. We're going to be examining them and seeing what situations, which one works best. So when you're creating your layouts, it just simplifies that decision for you. And I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. It's not necessarily but one dimensional versus two dimensional layouts, at least not in the way that you might normally be thinking about it. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least make you a little bit less frustrated by it. And one of the ways that we can do that is by understanding which tool is the right one for the job. And we're going to be able to do that today by breaking down Flexbox versus Grid. So let's go and dive right into the code and take a look at them. All right, so here we are in CodePen. We're gonna look at a few different examples. This first example is more just to give us a general rundown on the differences between them and some of the default behaviors uh, and examine a little bit what they do similar, what they do different. And then we're gonna break into other examples where I think it's more real world situations that show where those strengths can come in and ways that you might wanna use them. And so right here, you can see I have a setup here with Flex and Grid. And basically they're, the inner workings of each one of these is exactly the same. And so I have my flex container has direct children here and we don't even need these commented ones out. So let's just remove them. And so we have the exact same children in both of these. So we can just make sure we're on an equal playing field. And so if we come in here on the flex container and we turn on our display of flex, it will just make some columns. Flex does its flex thing and we get a bunch of columns. They're sort of responsive. They squish, they grow a little bit. They, they sort of do flexible things uh, as the name implies they will. And one thing that is important to know at Flexbox is every direct child will become a column, even if that means there'll be some overflow. And that means we can get some horizontal scroll scrolling with Flexbox when we're not careful with it. So that is an important thing to take note. Whereas grid, that won't really give you that problem by default because when you turn it on, nothing happens. <laughs> and this is because, well, with a flex container, display flex, the default here is a flex direction of row. And that means the parent is a row. So the main axis is the row. And that means all of the children inside of it are becoming columns. But this is, we're, we're choosing our flex container here. So we're saying our flex container is a row. So the children are becoming columns. That's the opposite behavior that we have in grid. Where in grid, the default behavior is a grid auto flow of row. And in this case, it's creating rows and they're all stacking on top of each other. So we could actually get a very similar behavior to Flexbox by changing the auto flow to column. And you'll notice they're almost the same. Not quite, but they're almost the same when we do that. And that's kind of interesting. And you'll see they, they sort of grow and they, they shrink in a very similar way, but there's a few little strange differences between them that we're not going to get into specifically in this video, but it is an important thing to notice. And if ever we do this, this is going to lead to that situation where on both of them, we are going to run into that overflow at one point because of just how these work. And if you are familiar with Flexbox, you might be going, well, I can prevent that, that behavior from happening, but I have a display of flex. I don't want any overflow, so I can do a flex wrap of wrap. And just like that now, if things run out of room, they're still gonna, well, they're not really squishy anymore until we get to this point, but they do wrap around and they do this wrapping thing instead. And I'll get into why they're behaving this way in just a second. Um, but let's go into grid and let's actually change this grid auto flow here. Uh, and instead of that, a similar behavior we could do here is a grid template columns. I'm gonna do the simple version first and then we'll make it fancier. Uh, so an often the thing you'll often see here is one FR just like a few times something like that Which will give us uh, in this case five columns and they're just five columns no matter what and they're they're doing their five column thing And that's it uh, And of course you can come on here and simplify that with a repeat of five one FR and then we have five columns or we could do four whatever you need and There we go. We get the columns and it's wrapping the content, but it doesn't sort of automatically wrap right we have these um, they're just sort of, we have four columns, we're stuck with four columns. Now there is a cool thing, and I'm not going to deep dive it in this video because I've, I've talked about it a lot in other videos, and if you'd like any of those, there's more in-depth Flexbox and Grid tutorials in the description below. 
Uh, but I will remind you about that at the end as well. Um, but with this auto fit, what you can do is a min max on here. And so on the min max here, we can give it two values, the smallest we want them to get and the biggest we want them to get. So let's say they have a minimum size of 300 pixels, because why not, and a maximum size of one FR. And now we're actually gonna see that we get a different amount of columns and they're gonna wrap. It's not quite like the Flexbox behavior, but we sort of get that like wrapping behavior as they wrap down and they go down and down and down and then back up this way. And this is a really important point to look at this Flexbox versus Grid. And an important two things to consider right now are it's not necessarily about a 1D versus 2D layout like we often hear. And that's because if you look at here, we actually have Flexbox creating a two-dimensional layout in a way up here. And then down here, we have Grid also making a two-dimensional layout. And they're doing it in different ways and they have different constraints in different ways that they're creating this. But it is important to know that Flexbox can wrap and Flexbox can do what, what we think of as a two-dimensional layout. But what's important with this is it's the way that we can control that layout that is one dimensional. And one way we can think about that too is each one of these rows is independent from the next one. So if we shrink down to here, like this column, here we have a very narrow column, here we have a big column, here we have an even bigger column, then we have some like this medium one, a big one, but like this, this column here is not looking at anything above it, anything below it. This row is independent from the row above it, it's independent from the row below it. Grid does not work that way. Grid is setting things up in a two-dimensional grid. So the columns, they're locked in. This one only has this little short word in it, but that column is stretching to match the other columns around it. Or when we have three, or when we have four, the column in this row it has to be the same as the column in this row. Now you can do things like span multiple columns, but it's still locked into a two-dimensional grid and you can't have these like in-between columny things. Rows also work this way where you can't get these in-betweeny row things like you might think of in a masonry layout, even though eventually that is part of the level three grid spec. So we will get masonry layout, which will be open up some interesting doors with CSS only. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to get there, but first we need subgrid because that's the level two part of the spec. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's not worry about that stuff too much right now. Um, but I just want to look at here and sort of the, the, you can think, you can already see grids a little bit more structured and Flexbox is a little bit more flexible. And now let's just, let's come on to here and make a quick change. But there's an interesting thing is if I do want to change the way things are behaving here a little bit, I can't actually do a lot more work here. To be able to make more changes to the flex stuff, I actually have to come onto the children. And in this case, I'm going to do a flex container the direct child and select every direct child child on there. And this is something that we don't generally need to do with um, grid, unless you're going into like alignment within the cell. Whereas with Flexbox, you pretty much very often have to go onto the children and set different things on here. And so let's start with one thing that's kind of interesting, which is going to be to throw a flex grow on here of one. And that's going to break things a little bit. But you can see like now, look at that. They're always filling up all their available space. We don't get those on, the, you know, that jagged edge we had before. They're all filling up the available space. Uh, we could even come on here and say a flex basis of 100%. Uh, actually, that's not going to do very much. Let's come on here and say 33%. And that's going to give us three columns. But then this last one's allowed to grow, so it breaks bigger. Um, and then so you get these sort of interesting things here. It's, you know, it's... It, it's getting too small. It's sort of figuring things out on its own. Um, and again, grid is just this structured thing. It's really relying on what the parent is telling it to do. And the children are living within the grid that is being created. And what Flexbox is really good at, and that comes down to like before I set these on here, is intrinsic sizing and relying on the intrinsic sizing of elements. Because a lot of what Flexbox does is looking at that. And when I say intrinsic sizing, I mean how this item is shrunk down to be as small as the content inside of it. Just like this one, just like this one, just like all of these. They're shrinking down to the size of the content that is inside of them. That's the intrinsic sizing uh, of an element. And there's other ways to have intrinsic sizing, but here and then we can, you know, here at one point they will actually start shrinking because they're running out of room. And this is one of those really nice things with Flexbox that uh, the default behavior for it doesn't lock it in so much. Whereas with Grid, Intrinsic sizing, there's ways of forcing it in there, just like there's ways of fighting against it within Flexbox, but the default way that it behaves is the grid sets things up and the children in there, 
they fill up the space or they take advantage of that space that the grid is making available to it. So what does all this mean? When, when do we decide which one we should be using? And I want you to often be thinking, do I want to be relying on the intrinsic sizing of something? Do I want it to be as big as it is? Or do I want to have a bit more of a structured control from the parent's perspective? And so one common thing that we come up with is navigations, right? And here I've color coded things just so we can visualize a little bit more what's happening. And I just have two identical navigations. One's in a header with a class of flex and one's in a header with a class of grid. So we'll come on here and we'll say flex and we'll do our nav list that's in there, nav list. And let's do a display of flex. And the nav list is my UL. So they all just go next to each other. And I purposely put this really long link just to highlight some things here. And we can come here and we can do a grid and then choose my nav list. And let's do a display of grid. And if you remember, this does nothing, right? And right away, obviously, the Flexbox solution here just seems the better one, right? Because one line of code sort of got me what I wanted. Whereas here, I have to do more lines of code. Knowing the strengths of each one of them lets you go down the happy path. Go down the path of least resistance where you're not trying to fight against what you're using so much. And so right away, I, I think, you know, the, the Flex one, look at this. Look at that. It's just working. And then we get some overflow. We're going to fix that. But we get down to here, it's going, and then, huh, okay, that's that's actually not so bad, right? Whereas with the grid one, okay, let's try and get a grid layout that actually looks okay. So we're going to come in and then, well, I guess we could do like I showed you before, grid auto flow column on here. And there we go. It's, it is coming, but the spacing on these are, are kind of weird. And well, you know what? We actually do have gap with flex. So maybe we do a gap of 1M here. And I don't know if I really need that gap on this one, because look at these big spaces that are coming. Again, default behavior. Maybe we could play with this a little bit to force the hand, but I'm still liking this one better than I'm liking this one. And okay, well, maybe you say don't use the grid auto flow column. Do that trick you showed before where I did my grid template columns of auto uh, auto fit and then on there we do our min max and let's just do a zero one fr and you can see see what happens with the zero one fr in here and we sort of go it looks a little bit better but look at the space like here we're running into a problem because look at all my columns are actually pretty much the same size now and then this one's like super close it's wrapping on two lines but like look how the spacing is unequal now because of the size of the cells are all the same but that means the spacing is way off and that's not really good. And once it does wrap on this, or we went to zero, maybe zero would be a little much. <laughs> Let's try two, uh, 150 pixels maybe, just so it does wrap around. Um, and then when they start wrapping, it's even worse here, right? Because that's that's kind of terrible. And what happens if we wrap again? Like, this isn't really wrapping the way I'd want it to. It's really creating this rigid grid system that I don't want. Whereas up here, if I just did a flex wrap of wrap, and nothing really changes, except now when I get to the smaller screen size, it just, it just wraps and it just goes down and it does what I need it to. And each navigation item is the size of itself, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. So by using the intrinsic sizing of each item, because I don't really want them to get big and bulky, like I see what's happening over here and like the vertical spacing, everything is off on this one, right? And whereas this other one, it just sort of works. And when I do run out of room, they squish down and here I'm, I'm actually getting running into overflow issues again. My, this is more narrow than you'll ever see, but you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and so Flexbox clearly, when we want this intrinsic sizing of things, it's just so wonderful. And it, you know, we just have these items that we want to go next to each other. If one's bigger, one's smaller, we want to keep those sizings. Flexbox is just wonderful. Grid, on the other hand, we can use in ways, and I'm not even going to get to like the big scale layout because often for large scale layouts, it's wonderful. But one place, and I've talked about this before, so you might have heard me say this, but one place that Grid really excels is actually, again, when we want more of a rigid system from the parent. So let's say we want equal columns here, and I'm going to do it with Flex first, where you get a display of Flex on something, and then it's kind of awkward. We get a small column, a small column, this bigger column, and let's throw a gap on there just so it doesn't look terrible. And that works, um, but it takes more work now to get to the next step. And again, we can't do any more work really on the parent to get these to be equal. If I want these to be equal, I need to go on to the children then. So I have to go into my columns and I have to sort of go against this intrinsic sizing. And this is, this is really relying, this is because of the intrinsic sizing that this one is bigger than these ones, because this has this really long paragraph in it and this one has shorter ones. And that intrinsic sizing is really getting based on this big long paragraph here. 
So because it wants to be bigger originally, even once they get squished and they shrink down, it's still going to be bigger than these other ones until I come on here and one common solution you'll see is putting a flex one and look at that. Now we get some more equal columns and that, I mean, it does the trick, right? It, it, it's not a terrible solution. It solves our problem. Um, even though there are situations where this could actually maybe not solve your, your problem. If some of these have padding and some don't, you get these minor indiscrepancies just because of how the Flexbox algorithm works and stuff. But let's not even worry about that. It's just, I find like here I'm, I'm doing, I have to go on the parent, on the children. It's not that bad, but this is also a very simple solution. Whereas let's, let's turn all of this off and let's go look at it. If I did a display grid and we'll do the gap as well. And then we can just say, I need three columns. So I just say three columns and then I get three columns. <laughs> and I'm saying they're one IFR each. This can result sometimes in unequal columns, um, especially if there's like long, a really long word in one of them and not the other one. So it's not a hundred percent of like a mat, like perfect solution. Uh, if you actually did a repeat with min max on these, you might get something that's a little bit more consistent. But most of the time, you're not going to get a super long word or something that might be throwing things off. So a simple thing like this um, will probably honestly do the trick. And you just get three equal columns. And what I like about this is it's the parent that's controlling it. I can throw any children in there without worrying about that at all. And it's a really simple solution. And again, it's pretty much the same amount of CSS. We have three properties here. We have three properties here. And I guess a little bit more longer because you actually need two selectors for the Flexbox solution on this. But I just like that the parent is really in control and is creating a rigid layout that I can plug content into instead of getting a behavior from the parent and then have to get the children to behave the way I want them to. And I have to sort of make the children in charge, whereas here the parent is in charge of everything that's going on. So I really do feel that for structured layouts, grid is a much better solution. And for those times where you want to rely on the intrinsic sizing of things, Flexbox is a much better solution. And that's whether there's wrapping or no wrapping. Here we have wrapping that's going on. So more of what you think is a 2D layout um, going on. And again, it's because of the flex direction and the control we have that we see Flexbox as 1D, whereas grid is 2D, um, where we can control both dimensions on the grid a little bit of a different way, but you can make a two dimensional layout using Flexbox and you can make a one dimensional layout with grid. And one thing I want to go to before we get to the end of this, um, before we wrap things up is I get asked a lot about if we can mix Flexbox and grid and people seem to think you get stuck with one or the other, but they work so well together. So here I've set up my grid that gives me my three columns here. And inside each one of these, I have these guys, uh, which are my tags. So if we just go take a quick look, I have my uh, this card article that's right here and in there I have a UL of tags and I can just do my display flex and a flex wrap on them and they get the, my little cards that show up here and look at that they work and everything just works magically because these I want to rely on the intrinsic sizing of each one of those little tag things that are created and then I want more of a structured grid style thing for the content itself. And I actually find that grid is an easier one to get started with, even though there's a lot of properties that go on with it. They're a lot more straightforward and there's a lot less worrying about it because you're doing a lot less fighting against the intrinsic sizing of things and wrangling what's on the parent and what's on the child. But whatever the case is and wherever you are in your learning journey, if you do want to get into one or the other, I have recently done videos on the easiest way to get started with Grid and the easiest way to get started with Flexbox. And both of those are right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I want to say a really big thank you to my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, Johnny, Jan, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.